We're here jump off and we're about to debate. So we've got Super Malcolm, we've got Kashmir, Kimberly J, John Z D, myself, Hakeem, Twist and Pulse, and we've also got Tony Adegan. And finally on the end, we've got Mr. Omar Paloma. So we're gonna look at when does boring become biting and if at any time does it become acceptable? Boring? Boring? Do we borrow? I think the classic cases are when you see people using your stuff. In a battle environment, so if someone does the running man and then someone comes back with the running man, are they biting? No. 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 If someone in a set, in a competition, does the and then you see someone do it in their set, are they biting? Not necessarily. Mm. Let's define biting then. What's biting? Like the concept behind the move. <laughs> Anyone could do this in their set. Mm. It's the concept of like the music or them going boom and then doing the slow motion version of it and then they're actually doing exactly the same thing to the same song or something What if it's like coincidence? That. It's quite a generic move. When you've got certain movements that people have created that are personal to them for whatever reason, especially identifiable moves for them. I know of a really common move that everybody does now. <laughs> nobody actually credits the person who created that. Did or you, nobody will ever, 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 ever talk about that. Did he crazy. You can't be serious. How do you mean? Breaking convention. It was the year that the Boogaloo's were there. Oh, four. And at the end of their set, you came on, you said something like, everybody stand up. If you have been doing hip hop, you have been doing what they are doing. We have all bit off of them. <laughs> Not saying that we're just literally stealing. The fact is, we're all taking people's moves. What was a signature move at one point is now just part of the vocabulary. But what we're doing with these moves, I mean, okay, we're using them to train in order to start by taking something and you go, I like that move, I'm gonna learn that move. It's when you get to a point where you're in a competition or you're on reality TV and you're doing something that you are claiming is entirely your own original work and your own original car. Who inspires you? How, how God. You? And, <laughs> and, uh, no, not John C. Not, not the electrical oh, right, crews. Right, you know, right, then, right. That's, then I've got a problem with it. You know? <laughs> There's a big space between what you're talking about, Omar, when it comes to influence, the fact that dance exists as a thing. So what you're talking about, which is a blatant move that somebody saw in the mix of all of this and go, oh, they did that. And then you see that in the next battle. We see that all the time. And every time I go to like a set, everyone's doing that whole, when the women drop, boom. And then leg goes one way and oh, the leg yeah. goes. That, everyone's that's, doing that at the moment. So does that mean that's a foundation? Yeah, yeah, that's a foundation. Yeah. That's, that's a foundation. Yeah. 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 It goes from a foundation time, to a, time. hey, you're biting. Time. Yeah. Time, 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 I guess. Yeah. 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 What do you mean? So when Club came out, people thought it was a fad. All the people who were above, Say, oh, it's just going to be a fad, it's going to die in a few years. It took time to make foundation for itself. And now this could have been, you know, the jab could have been a fad at one point, but now that it's taken time and developed, it's now foundation. So you can't yeah. bite that. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. okay. it's been developed. Right. Yeah. What is a blatant case of biting? If we were to stand in a line and four of us do back tucks so in a certain rhythm to whatever music and then do this, but then the next show, the group that was watching go out on stage. And do the same one, two, three, four. So it's more of a combination. Yeah, so it's like the same song as well, and it makes it more. Anyone in this room been bitten? And I don't mean by a dog either. I think you create a move you think is yours. Next thing you know, somebody big already done it. And you find yourself in a position of being, oh, snap, what do I do now? Yeah. You took time, because like you were, uh, I don't know what we're saying, that you create a move by making mistakes. You create that move, somebody else, a big name, is doing it as well. What do you do? Do you carry on doing it, or do you stop there? You say, oh, you know what, yeah. if I do it, people are going to call me a biter. Like, they were saying is, if you have a piece of 4-8 that somebody did in America Got Talent and the same person comes back and do the same thing, then yeah, it's called yeah. biting, I would call that and biting. Have you been bitten? Yeah. What was your reaction? Uh, just, I don't know. Either the person saw me doing it before and they're trying to do the same thing, or they actually created it. What was your reaction? So I was pissed off at first. But did, you, did you address it? No, I was watching on the video, so... Have you been bitten, Kashmir? I don't think so, no. Okay. Kim? I had whole choreography bit <laughs> and that person knows who he is <laughs> and we've had it out. His whole thing was, Kim, you were such an inspiration. It was the exact same choreography to the exact same track. Oh, and I saw yeah, them at an fine. event that they didn't know I was going to be. It was in a really random oh, place, in a random so university, long way long outside long. London. And they didn't have any clue that I was going to be there. And I actually heard the track, I thought, oh, okay, and saw them doing my exact routine. What did you do? It just so happens Your that they filmed me doing it at another event. And just completely, I had to say, listen, are you, no, 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 Kim, it's, it's you know, it's, just, it's an inspirational thing. You just inspire me, you know. To be honest, at the time, just, I let it wash over me. I was like, whatever. That, all I know now is that, you know, yeah, yeah. my choreography is my choreography. That's what about it. you, Mr. John Z D? Well, we know. You know. <laughs> that was, I think, 
the most recent time <laughs> I'm aware of being bitten. It's interesting because for me, I remember when I first did what I call hip hop theater. This was in 1995. Wasn't aware of it. It just made sense to call it that because it was hip hop styles and rap within a black box yeah. of theater. And I just come back from training at London Contemporary Dance School. Mm -hmm. So I had an understanding of how to use the theater space. So I wanted to do that with hip hop, yeah? Mm -hmm. When I first did that, for some reason, I felt that anybody else that did hip hop in the theater was biting. Right. So you thought I was a biter? Of course. <laughs> no, you thought I was a when I first was here. Yeah, you're still biting. No, man. Yeah. Like that, man. <laughs> I think it is about what you're saying. You do a move, in time it becomes foundation. I felt quite protective of that. The fact that this was a thing and I hadn't really worked out what it is yet. I was a bit worried that my name would get lost in the middle of everything. Now I'm not on that level at all. I've moved on from that. I've seen whatever the name was a crew was on TV doing the tss tss. Something that I did like a good 15 years ago now, maybe 16 years now. And I'm like, inspiration. Yeah. Mm. Hey. And done. Mm. Twist and pulse. For us, what I think is quite hard is like how people, if someone did something and you can clearly see an adaption or an involvement of that without taking some essence of it, imagine you know it's going to be the best thing that dancers would ever see and it would make everything go crazy, yeah. but you'd have to take the essence of that for it to become something bigger and better because you know that person's never going to come up with it, but you've got the light bulb. Like Perido, for instance, the whole putting your arms together and doing this has been done from Cruise years oh. doing like the caterpillar effect. Can like, I say when that was done? Yeah. The yeah. first time I saw that was in a dance company called Emo Emojo. Mojo. Mojo. Yeah. This move has been done for hundreds of yeah. years. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. So is that biting? This is where I'm getting okay. at. Before I was in Perido, this was the first thing, and it came as a piece of they were doing something, then they done this with their arm, and they did a slow motion kind of thing. Yeah. Like, to me, that's an adaption of this whole caterpillar okay. effect. They're not just standing there doing this because they've seen someone down the road, but yeah. the whole feel of the piece where they had the, the swishing motion and I they did the arm, yeah. and they did a feel step it. out and a cannon and a slow motion. To me, I don't feel that that's biting because no one's ever kind of done that. But it's like, if they thought to themselves, oh, we can't put our arms together in the sink and do a cannon mm -hmm. because someone a thousand years ago, did it? Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Though? It's like a move like the resurrection. Somebody invented yeah. that move, and then everybody <laughs> does. I think it depends on one interpretation, really, it's amazing. and knowledge as well. It. If you know that where that move is coming from, it's been done years and years yeah, ago, yeah, like yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Then you can't really say, oh, it's biting. You can always emulate from the move that yeah. you yeah. actually saw. Like you said, it was done ages ago, but then when Perido did it and made it the signature thing, like yeah. you said, it felt like, are they allowed to now put that in a box and lock that as their move now, mm. that no one else can step away and do that? That's what it felt like when other people did it. I know that even being in the group, I felt like, oh, what are you doing? Like, oh, yeah. that's our thing. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. You know I, mean? I think there's a thin line between biting and inspiration. Have you been bitten, first of all? Yeah, be it be moves. I've seen my own choreography taught in Poland to a class <laughs> on YouTube. It's happened to many people that I know as well in terms of they've seen their choreography within a piece, a performance piece mm -hmm. in another country and someone's literally just gone on YouTube, learnt the choreography and taught yeah, it to their company. They've gone over and taught, they filmed it. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. It happens. I mean, especially with the internet now, you know what I mean? Everyone's yeah, just next so door. Quick, so We're like this. Oh, we've got YouTube. people in other countries doing our set that have remixed the mix to sound like our mix. So like they've redone like the whole thing the whole like found that song when it goes Everybody in love, love uh, 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 They're oh, trying to add like extra then. cuts in the same And then they do the same thing as I I've even got worse, I've heard people literally just take the soundtrack off YouTube. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Off, yeah. The yeah. off the performance. Off the performance. And the cheering crowd in the background. <laughs> Whether it's concept or whether it's choreography, people are going to be inspired and people are going to want to emulate or be inspired by that and create something new or just buy it. Um, only my class choreography. I was told by a student of mine that another student of mine was actually literally reteaching my class a couple of miles away. They would come and they would learn my routine <laughs> and take my music to their studio and teach my stuff and not give any credit. I mean, obviously that's biting, but it's a different kind of biting. When we select our music, <laughs> to perform, are we not biting off artists who've been in studio working very hard to create music? Ooh, wait, then, music. Wait. wait, I'm just asking as, wait. as a question. <laughs> That's That's a thing. Their music. No, I'm just saying, I don't know. We're so taking someone's old music dance. and we're just dancing to their track that they slaved over, mastered, mixed down, worked hard and we're just doing the music. What do you think <laughs> the musician made the music for? <laughs> to make money. <laughs> 
Do you think maybe that they we're not did it to dance to? We're not crediting them. We're not crediting them, crediting them yeah. as well. You know, I get what you're pointing. Mm. As in the credit, in relation to credit. Okay. Yeah. We, I we, think it's we credit. listen and we hear a track, I'm going to choreograph to that. We choreograph to it and we go out and we sometimes get notoriety for our set because of that song. Are we biting? We're getting annoyed because people are biting our moves, our dance moves, but are we not biting people's well, craft? Well, yeah, it's I exposure and also the venue should have PRS. True. Yeah. I knew that was yeah. <laughs> so therefore they're sorted. If you're dancing, you dance to people who've made true. music. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's, that's How good. else do you dance? Yeah, true, that's right. <laughs> that's like the argument of people altering tracks that are already made like we yeah. do and putting it to how they want because with dancers I know like certain grooves when they get a song and say it's Usher and there's a bit of the song where he goes oh 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 oh, oh, oh and they yeah. dance to that bit on stage they'll get the biggest applause for that part of the song but because Usher made that it's okay but I could grab a song that's Kanye West and he's saying oh my and I just take the oh and make it go oh 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 oh, oh my and mm -hmm. make it sound exactly the same and hit it in the exact same way, but mm. because we've altered our music, we're not dancing to the rhythm of the song and blah blah blah. But really, we're just creating our own. No, I'm and just our own asking: Are we being true to the artist? Mm. When you make the move, you make it for yourself. It's mm -hmm. your move. What doing? You make it for yourself, and you just do it at home. You just share. <laughs> show yeah, like, it's my move. Mm -hmm. it's that's like, how it makes you feel. That. Yeah, that's why. So it's, it's signature the same move. With music then. If well, I if I'm making music, I make it to share. There's no point me making music and just and only just the got my headphones on. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, but when you share, when you're talking about sharing music, you want everybody to hear your music, but you don't want every producer to bite your music. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Which is yeah, different. different. <laughs> but it's, I'm still sharing though. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Share, but me as a dancer, I want to share my move with everybody, but I don't want everybody to bite my move. I'm puzzling over the idea of people reteaching something that they've learned, that they were inspired by. Because sometimes, for example, if you have a nice piece of choreography, and it's a bit different if they're putting it into a, a show or a competition, but if they've learned something from your class, and they've gone to another country or something like that, and they credit you, I learned this from KJ, Kimberly J. I want to teach this to you. Isn't that a good thing? Yeah, yeah, they credit it's you. If you credit yeah. you, but don't come don't stand go in front of the class and no, say, this is what I made at home. But yeah. there are people who, are, who, are, who don't even want you to reteach their choreography, even in an educational environment. Yeah. And, and I have a problem. It's like well, copywriting in school. Like, don't copy my page and teach it to anybody. Don't show Why anybody my form. Why would they want to do that? The but only way that I can think, the but the only way I can think someone doesn't want you to reteach their choreography is because they probably don't think you're going to teach it as well as them and that you're diluting it down. Perhaps. But that is effectively what the music industry is doing with music they're saying don't take our piece of music and redo it in any shape or fashion you take it exactly as it is you pay for it exactly as it is you make any alterations you're gonna to have to pay us money I feel like we're starting to drift that way a little bit with dance where people are getting all upset about taking something and sharing it with people third hand if you've taught me something when I was a kid you teach it to me and I teach it to my little brother there's no going back and saying do I can I have permission to you know, we just did it. That was a part of the evolution, mm. if you will, of a lot of the hip-hop we did. It's just different when you put money in it, though, isn't it? Bottom line. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that that's, only, that that's, the, that's the only difference. <laughs> Tony, would you want someone teaching your avant-garde choreography? Depends who it is. Was, is that because of who you're worried about how they... Yeah, are? how they communicate like what I've originally done. I wouldn't have a problem with it, but it just depends on who they're teaching and who it is, I think. Someone in the back of your class, who you know comes to your in class... In the back of my class. Does it's right. not teach it publicly got, to... A, a, yeah, they got hook up into the back I've got a problem with that. But why? Because it's pretty commonly said, if you teach something that you've learned, you learn it better, right? So yeah. aren't they becoming a better dancer? It's just a whole notion of them teaching it to a mass of people, teaching it to their little brother, little sister, their mum, their dog, it's fine. <laughs> There's an air of integrity as artists that we want to try and keep within our work. Mm. No matter how far it goes, you want to keep a certain essence the same. It relates to like the whole thing about teachers in general, like if you don't have something that you already have within you to give back and to be able to make up choreography because of, that's what you've learned. If you're only taking something that you're still learning, then really you shouldn't be at that level where you're going out to teach in the first place. John, someone says, I love that, I'm going back to South Africa and I'm going to teach a section of that thing. How do you feel about that? Let me know the context. Let them know who you got it from. Yeah. Fine. Twist and Pulse. Same. Uh, I wouldn't be happy because then I'll see it on YouTube and it look pants. Credit it team, to, but credit I don't it to be my routine and anymore. It's like, Artist and Pulse made this and they're like... So it's important to the art, you as the artist, that you know that it's going to be replicated yeah. Yeah. well. Yeah. Of course. But if they're going to put it online and stuff like that and credit you to it... You want it to look good, yeah, you want it to work up to your standards how you first thought yeah. it or whatever. Martha Graham, contemporary dance choreographer, she created a whole technique in which some people teach well and some people teach badly. I think that's what it's about. You've got a form, you've created a thing, and then if other people teach it, they've got to teach it good. 
Because if they teach it badly, then you'll get people saying, ah, oh, Graham technique is whack. Mm -hmm. It's only because yeah. that teacher yeah. taught it wrong. Yeah, that's okay? true. Yeah, but that's yeah. why I think when it comes down to like styles and stuff like you said, if you're teaching a specific set foundation of stuff, then knowing it to the T and pushing it on. But obviously if you're teaching choreography, I could have made choreography to look way and done and just hitting beats like this yeah. and then gone away and taught it. But that wouldn't be the same as teaching something that's already set and that technique is the way it needs to be that these 10 people can go away and teach it because it's set in a certain way. You can only give it a certain way because it only is a certain way. But whereas your choreography is your choreography. See, now we're back to biting, right? There's a couple of little kids who saw the Filipino All-Stars routine yeah. and they became YouTube phenomenons for recreating this routine and almost exactly. And what they did is the amazing. Song. It really is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's incredible what they've done. Now, we're not upset See, with these little kids for biting. We're actually saying what they did is incredible because it was an authentic reproduction. Did they get permission? No. Did they, did they, they saw it on YouTube they and they were inspired and made it up themselves. Did they say we got this from the Philippines also? I don't remember if there was any interview of them. Just see them doing the choreography and it's amazing what they've been able to do. I don't, I don't think that's a good thing to do because for somebody to take a lot of time to create something that amazing, the most important thing is the, the credit that you give back to yeah, the person. Exactly. You can do that, but at the bottom in the comments say I took that from Filipino All Stars. That's what you should it's put important. down. Yeah, because a lot of work that has been put down to do that Okay. And you just copy and paste. But yeah. somewhere in there, it's clear that this is the routine for Filipino all <laughs> uh, Remember, it was Visala, that amazing dancer from France. And he went on Britain Got Talent, but in France. And somebody done exactly the same routine as him <laughs> in <laughs> Poland. <laughs> exactly the same. And you got food people, oh my god, you're amazing, blah, blah, blah. Exactly the same as Salah in another country. Now in his YouTube video, you don't see at the bottom, I took that routine from Salah. You don't see him on TV saying that. For me, that becomes a problem. As long as there's a credit. But is it okay? Do you still tune into YouTube and you see your routine created by someone you had no inclination they were going to do it, you see it. But then at the bottom it goes, and we credit Twist and Pulse. Do you feel, oh, that's all right. Do you still feel? It's still not alright. Right. 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 So the way they have around now, they're so lighting stuff. Okay. Why? Is it because they didn't ask your permission? Yeah, of course. Okay. So I was giving the impression that you created something that you didn't, like in the case of right. the whole reality TV thing, if you're going to blatantly pull out a move and then go on to win a hundred grand or whatever it was. <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> I, I don't know, two guys who went on to, they went on to win a lot of money doing a move that they never created the originator for. The move that they did, maybe they saw it from someone else. They might not even know where it came from. Just know it's out It came from somewhere, because you saw it somewhere, so even if you didn't know that it came from so someone What if they credit someone so, in, who didn't even make it up themselves? <laughs> what what they made it up? Subconscious. Oh, what are the odds? No, I'm saying it, it's a possibility. The possibility. odds of them using the exact same piece of music and coming up with the same choreography. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's. <laughs> Give it people proper sit down and go. Yeah. Yes. I've got no choreo. Yeah. Let me try yeah. and find something yeah. obscure. YouTube babies, oh, man. YouTube babies. YouTube save a lot of people. <laughs> I have no inspiration. This is what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah. It's as simple as that. No, no, no. Oh Sorry, my god, that's myself. dope. I would have done no, no. that. There's you on YouTube browsing and you see something, you think that's dope and you copy it. Then there's I need choreography. Yeah. And you go on. <laughs> that's Twitch <too> shopping. <laughs> <laughs> I think we Permission. Credit. Choreo shopping, man. I hate to tweet that.